All right, so we are going to record this session so that the rest of our Wolf Pack has the same um, images as you guys do with the training since they can't make it tonight. Um, so what questions do you guys have for me? Becky, I hear you. One question I have, is there a way um, you can print, like you put your, your guest list in the computer, um, is there a way you can print those labels of their names and addresses from that or do you have to just do it one by one? Yeah. Put it in. Not currently, there's not a way. I know that that's something that they are working on. Um, okay. But I can tell you, um, I think it's more professional to actually hand address all of your envelopes because it's more personal then. I know it's, you know, it's a little okay. bit extra time to hand write out everything, um, but I think then, then you're, you're showing the thought and, and kind of concern or consideration, so to speak, um, when you actually hand address envelopes versus printing a label. Okay. All right, and I see Becky joined us. Hello, Miss Becky. Hello. And we've got Ashley on with us. And Ashley was a virtual party host from tonight. Um, hold on, she says she still can't hear anything. No. All right, so who else is hopping on? Heather's hopping on here. I see. Um, I'm trying to get Ashley figured out. Like saying, um, Ashley was a virtual party host last night that's considering joining our team. Oh, here. Oh. It's not working. Anything else in my house tonight? Parking dogs, screaming kids. You know, the whole nine yards. You have no barking dogs. No, never. Hold on. <sighs> Becky. She's on mute. Okay, sorry. I was just trying to take care of an issue. Becky, there's yeah. a lot of background noise. I'm not sure what it is, but it's like all scratchy. Do you hear it? I'm not sure what it is. It stopped for this second, but it was really bad a couple of times. Sorry, I'm having some child issues. It didn't sound like any kids. It's like a scratching, like on chalkboard. No, I, I. Oh, okay. You were telling us something else that we didn't know. Okay. <laughs> I have you guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have everybody click the microphone and go ahead and mute. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and start the training. And then since I have everybody here with us now, we'll um, do questions at the end again. So if you guys can all just click your little microphone, it should be on the bottom left-hand side. Yep, and that will mute you. Um, if you have a question in between, then you can just click that to unmute as well. Okay. So we are going to talk about connections tonight, okay? So I have a lot of notes, so I'm going to be kind of looking away at my phone. Would anyone know why she can't hear? Unmute if you can think of why Ashley wouldn't be able to hear us. She says she sees talking. But 
Is she unmuted or is she muted? No, that wouldn't cause that. No. It should have asked her to enable sound. At least it asked me to. Yes. Good point. Okay. I don't know. We'll get it figured out, I guess. It's kind of hard to talk and do all that. Yeah, she said it didn't ask her to enable sound. That's down on the bottom. Okay, so anyway, sorry guys. Um, so we're, we're gonna be kind of focusing on a lot of different things at one time. Um, each one of you guys have different goals for your businesses. Um, so some of you guys are looking to kind of promote to the next level. Um, some of you guys are just looking for a steady show schedule. Um, some of you guys are just looking for consistency, a consistent paycheck. Um, you know, and no matter what that kind of all entails, it's all going to involve the same things. And, it, and it's going to be a, a matter of contacts because contacts are, are going to be what control your business. Okay. Um, both from the recruiting standpoint and from the party standpoint, it's always going to be about contacts. So there's going to be times in your business where you may feel like you don't have enough contacts or the contacts that you currently have are kind of all dried up, um, or they're just not producing what you think that they should. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that you can go about increasing the amount of contacts. So I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Everybody have a piece of paper? Give me a thumbs up if you have paper in front of you. Thum, 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 thum. Everybody has paper? Okay, so let, let's talk about where your contacts are. Um, so I want you guys to get ready to write this answer down. Grab your paper and write this down in all caps. I want you to write the word everywhere. And big capital letters write everywhere. <clears throat> now underneath that, I want you guys to write every place that you were at today. Okay, for some of us, that may be a lot of places. For some, that may be only a couple places. But I want you guys to write down every place that you were today. For me, I just wish I was in my bed. All right, now, next, write down all the places you went yesterday. Becky, I can see the smoke coming out of your ears. And today's what, Tuesday? So let's go one more day backwards. How about the places you were Sunday? For some of us, we, we're thinking, oh my gosh, I, didn't, I don't even know where I was yesterday, let alone Sunday. All right, give me a thumbs up when you guys have all of your lists ready for those three days. Becky's thumbs up. Joanne's thumbs up. How about Jamie? She got her list done? Heather's a thumbs up. Angela's still thinking. I see smoke coming out. Bridget's thumbs up. Stephanie, you still there? 
And Brittany, I don't know if you're able to write right now. Are you able to write with us? I'm at ball practice. Okay. But I'm here. Not by much. Yeah. Okay. So once you have those lists ready, where are you going tomorrow? What are the places you plan on going tomorrow? So write down on that list where you're going tomorrow. Looks like every other day. <laughs> For some of us, it may. It may be work, work work and work <laughs> okay and home yeah work and home okay so do you know that everywhere you go is an opportunity for contacts everywhere you go you're always going to come in touch with somebody okay if you literally have nowhere that you are going then i'm going to i'm going to challenge you to get out and be involved in the community somehow. I'm not challenging you to you know, uh, have your head up and you know, I'm challenging you to have your head up and kind of pay attention around you for anything. I'm looking for what I call red flags. Did you guys see my post on Facebook about red flags? So imagine you are going to the bank. How many of you guys choose to go through the drive through versus going inside? Raise your hand if you go through the drive through Okay. How about when you go to, let's say, Starbucks? Do you go through the drive through line or do you go inside? Who goes through the drive through Lots of guilty hands. Who doesn't go to Starbucks? <laughs> there you go, Beck. Okay, how about, how about you're going, let's say, to a fast food restaurant? How many of you guys go inside versus going through the drive-thru? Who goes through the drive-thru? Yeah. Is it because you guys are shy? Who's shy? Or is it about convenience? It's about convenience. Becky's saying convenience. Okay. So when we are taking the convenient route, what do you think that we're missing out on? Who wants to unmute and give me an answer? Can everybody? Exactly right. Connections, new contacts, potential customers, potential hosts, potential recruits. Okay. Now, I know that it's more time involved with trying to, you know, make sure that we're always taking that extra step to go inside versus going through the drive through. But when you do that, people start getting used to your face, particularly at the bank, okay? I make a lot of trips to the bank. Those girls know me. I don't have to provide my bank card anymore to them. They can, like, pull up my account <laughs> real quick. It's kind of sad, actually. But I go inside most of the time because I get to have a conversation with them, you know? And the other thing is I'm sporting my Pamper Chef logo wear. You know, they all know I'm a consultant, but does everybody else that's going to see me when I go in there and I'm having these conversations know that I'm a Pamper Chef consultant? Well, if they didn't before, they do now because I'm wearing my logo wear. So it's, it's an intentional choice that you have to make to connect with people. And let's face it, life is more fun when you connect with people. I mean, imagine, you know, imagine, yeah, I could do all my training if I wanted to probably through a, a Facebook message, probably, 
But, you know, for me, it's a little bit more fun to see you guys every week and interact with you and really get to know who you are and watch little babies grow up and, um, you know, all those fun things. It's all about connecting. So the same way I'm connecting with you guys is the same way you need to connect with your host and with your customers and with your guests at your shows. The more personal you can make it, wouldn't you guys all agree, if I were a stuffy director that just, you know, I don't know, every month calls you towards the end of the month to say, hey, Joanne, are you going to have sales this month or what? Or, hey, Bridget, um, is there anything I can do for you? Or, hey, Becky, um, when are you going to submit a show? What would you think of me as a director then? If I didn't really try to have those relationships or build connections with you guys, you'd probably be like, oh my gosh, she only cares about herself, right? So our customers and our hosts feel the same way about us. Um, you know, if you take that extra amount of time to really work on having a relationship with them, they're going to be back. They're going to be a lifelong host for you. <coughs> so from now on, you are on a mission to meet people. Okay, more people to make more contact. It's not as important that you say perfect, magical words as it is that you make enough contacts. This is the case of quantity over quality. Okay, that's really important, and that's a, a good lesson. Um, if you are looking for any kind of self help books, um, a really good book is um, called Go for No, and it really teaches you and drives home the fact that. You know, you have to hear the word no um, in a business like this to really grow. Um, so, again, you're looking for quantity of contacts, not necessarily the quality, because the quality contacts are going to be built in with that quantity. <clears throat> so, now that we've discussed meeting new people by doing what we already know that we should be doing, which is stretching ourselves, um, taking the hard route. My guess, or my next question would be, talk about the people that you already know. My guess is that nearly every one of us has somebody already in our life who could benefit, benefit from trying Pampered Chef. Ask yourself, who do you know that is just like you? Some of us, that might be scary to work with someone that's just like us. For me, it would be really, really crazy. Um, who has the same amount of kids as you? Who works the same amount of hours as you? Who lives in the same neighborhood as you? Who has the same challenges as you? Who do you know that needs extra money? Who have you seen on Facebook that, you know, posts, hey, does anybody know anybody hiring or, um, you know, looking for, um, you know, just a way out from their everyday issues or, you know, somebody looking for friends to go hang out on the weekend or um, those kinds of things. Those are all red flags to kind of keep your eyes open for. So did anybody come up with any... Uh names as I was as I was re or saying that did anybody kind of be like oh wow I, I bet this person would um kind of fit that category any names come up with any of those questions that you had to ask yourself how about you Bridget does anybody fit those categories yeah I already mentioned couple to you especially with needing money absolutely you know you're a young college student but who better to need extra money than college kids right exactly <laughs> you go all the way with that one yep okay let's see Brittany did anybody come up on your radar when we asked those questions I'm sorry what did you say did anybody kind of pop in your head as I ask you those questions that would fit those categories? A couple people. A couple people? 
Okay. Yeah. All right, Joanne and Jamie, how about you guys? <coughs> Go ahead. Yeah, a friend of mine who is looking for a way to make money. And she's very open. Okay. So I actually talked to people at Pinnacle. I actually got two names of people who were possibly interested in having a show on Sunday when I was there. I called one yesterday and she had actually just had a show. Um the person who referred her um didn't realize that. So I okay. have a um, and she is going to be off on Thursday, so she wants me to call her Thursday. So, okay, while I was at work, <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people that work are guilty of working pampered chef while they're at work. <laughs> right, Becky Chilcoat, I know she's guilty of it. <laughs> what? Uh huh. Right. What? <laughs> I work for the federal government. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get these random emails once in a while. <laughs> Did I tell you my boss said he stole one of my catalogs? <laughs> He's hired. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> okay, so not only can those questions, you know, those little questions that you start asking yourselves apply for hosting, but they can also apply for the, our business opportunity. So I want you to kind of look at them in both directions, you know. Because the same people that don't have money, um, maybe they don't want to join your team, but maybe they want to fill their kitchen up with free products, okay? So we have two different kind of benefits that we can offer people, offer, you know, other people. <clears throat> so I want you guys to remember, though, that it's not our decision whether they say yes or no, okay? It's our decision to be committed to asking them. That's all we're required to do is to ask. It's up to them whether they say yes or whether they say no. If you don't ask, then you are making the decision for them. Okay? And that for me was a really hard one to kind of um, get over because I have always been the biggest prejudger. Um, anybody else like to prejudge people? You know, they don't need money. Um, they they make enough money. Why would they ever want to work Camper Jeff? Or, um, you know, she's a busy mom. She would never have time for this. Um, you know, she doesn't cook. Why would she want to do Camper Jeff? Um, you know, there's a million things that kind of go through your head when you interact with people. And you're like, oh, she would never want to do this. Or he would never want to do this. Do you guys realize that this, this business is not only for women, it's for men too. There's a lot of successful men in our company. And I hate to tell you this, girls, but they're some of our top sellers. They're kicking our butts. Okay. <laughs> but the problem becomes when we don't ask, we fail to do our job, then we've already answered that question for people. We've already said, you know what? You're not good enough to do pampered stuff. That's, that's really, that's what you're telling someone when you don't ask them, is that you're not good enough to be a part of my team, okay? Um, we may already have it in our minds that they would never want to do this, but unless you ask, the answer is always no. So, with all that being said, everyone is entitled to their own no, okay? Let them be the judge and jury on whether they say yes or no, not you. So I want you guys to write down at least three names of people you already know that you ask if they want to know more about the business. Hmm. Three people. Who would those three people be? Me, myself, and I. I would hire me again. Three people. What did I say? Hold on. Three people that you already know that you can ask if you want more information. So write those three names down. 
And yes, it's 730 and I'm drinking coffee. Three people who what? Three people that you already know that you can ask if they want to know more about our business. <clears throat> now, next to those people's names, why would they be good for Pampered Chef? What make the people stand out to you? Why would they be a good fit? Write that down. Are they crazy and funky just like Angela? <laughs> I liked those eyes. That was funny. Are they really quiet and reserved like Becky Chilcote? <laughs> <laughs> Are they shy and never talk like Joanne? So why would they be a good fit for Pampered Chef? Maybe you guys got that wrote down. I only have one. You only have one? Only one mm -hmm. came up? Okay, one is better than zero. Brittany's got an idea. I'm sorry, were you talking to me? I wasn't listening. Girl, you need oh. to pay attention. You're, you're about to be fired. No, I'm just joking. I'm sorry, I'm at softball practice and my daughter was batting. Oh, okay, that's more important. <laughs> <clears throat> you're gonna have more later. Okay, you don't, I'll, you don't, have don't give me don't give me too much homework because I start college tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so once you guys have that written down, now I want you to do the flip side. Why? Which camper oh, step nice for them? So we wrote first why they would be good for camper chef. Now, why would camper chef be a good fit for them? I couldn't hear you. Why would Camper Chef be a good fit for them? I already wrote down oh. why is a good fit for Chef. So why is Camper Chef a good fit for them? All right, who wants to share what I have written down? Give me one person and the reason why they'd be a good fit and why Pamper Chef would be a good fit for them. Who'd you come up with? What you got, me? I got one good idea. I've got a few people who might be a good fit, but the best fit is that someone who I know who loves to cook and loves to be center stage. Ooh! <laughs> she just loves the people to watch. <laughs> She's done before, cooked at home before for fun. The center of attention is always a great person for this kind of business. Joanne, did you come up with anyone who was on yep. your list? Yep. Um, well, Amanda Kirkpatrick, which I've already talked to you about. I'm still waiting for her. She needs money. She loves to cook. So it will be good for her for those reasons. I know a girl named Cindy Maurer. Um, she really needs money. In fact, the community did a fundraiser for her. She has cancer in her bladder. She worked with a lot of secondhand smokers. Mm. And, and like that's always the number one incidence with smoking, bladder cancer. People think it's lung cancer, but it's not. Bladder cancer is the number one cancer for smokers or those who inhale other people's smoke. And so bladder cancer, she has urostomy tubes in and she developed scar tissue. They tried to replace the tubes last week. They replaced them, but they couldn't get through the scar tissue. So 
she will be a good fit in that she needs money, but I'm not sure with her health that she's up to it. Timing. Yeah. Another person I thought of, her name's Lynn. I just met her at our exercise group. Um, she's also, she's also, she's an LPN. Okay. And, um, she just has a fun personality. I don't know much about her. I just met her, but she's a person who's on my radar. <laughs> so well, fun is always good. You know, fun people attract more fun people. Right. Plain and simple. All right, Angela, who'd you come up with? Give me one first. Um, I, I'm having trouble coming up with a specific name, but I know that there's probably even people on like my friends list that would do like virtual parties, I think, um, that I could train to do them. But yeah, I, I think I'm just like a little bit brain dead. It's been a long day, but um, I'm sure if I had more space in my head right now, I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never get those brain cells back either, I'm to tell you. Yeah, I'm realizing that. Nobody warned me that that was like a real thing. But. It is. <laughs> yeah, for four kids, they're all gone, trust me. Yeah, I, my aunt just joined, and that's great. We're, we're very similar, and that's been good. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's progress, guys. Everything that we do is progress, okay? Yeah. So, you know, putting these names down on paper, it makes it real, you know, to see that you actually have people um, or potential people that you can work with or work on, as Joanne likes to say, because I love that. I'm working on her. Um, but it, it's all about putting two and two together and really finding that perfect pair. You know, who's good for us and who are we good for, okay? I would say we're just about good, you know, we're good for anyone, pretty much. You know, we really kind of answer the problems um, both financially, you know, to the point that we can offer a business opportunity to, to the fact that we can offer people a way to put dinner, you know, on the table in 30 minutes or less. So we really work with every lifestyle. Okay. We have something to offer anybody, whether it's somebody that wants financial stability or somebody that just wants to learn how to cook. All right, so let's talk more numbers. Who likes numbers? I love numbers. I'm a total numbers geek. So how many contacts can you make in one day? Throw out a random number. How many contacts do you think you make? How many new contacts do you think you make in any given day? 20. 20? Who said 20? Brittany? Yeah. Woo! 20. You lost your mind. If you don't work, you can call people all day long. <laughs> my wife's gone crazy. Oh, my. All right. Who else Who else has a number for me? New contact. You mean like brand new people? Yeah, people to your circle. Hmm. Never really thought about it. Huh? In all seriousness, I'd probably say like five. You could probably contact five people a day. Okay. And if it's not new contacts, you know, maybe it's someone you fell out of touch with, um, haven't talked to in a while. Um, each of us is different, but I'll tell you that you can do more than you think you can. Um, we often sell ourselves short when the truth is we've got more. We've got more to offer. Um, I have a director friend who is our top leader in the company, um, and he told me at our meeting a couple of years ago um, that he had someone promote to director in 26 days. Can you imagine promoting to a director in 26 days? Wow. And yes, he's a man. Remember I told you guys earlier about that man thing. If he took 26 days to promote, how many contacts do you think he talked to each day? Like 
Can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. It promoted in 26 days to a director, so from a consultant to a director, how many contacts do you think he made a day? 26. <laughs> Wouldn't that be neat? Yeah. 26 for 26 Woo! days. It sounds like a program. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just a side note, okay? Now, now think about it. You're promoting to a director in 26 days, which means that not only are you growing your business, you're also helping other people to start growing their business, which means that you're recruiting people, right? So the way that he did this was he started talking to his team members about talking to people as soon as they signed up. So some of his five team members were signed by him and some were signed by his new team members. So when you think about this, when you start thinking about how connections can change your business, imagine yourself in 26 days from now going from a consultant to a director. Can any of you guys see that happening? Would any of you love for that to happen? Well, of course. <laughs> But you also have to be reasonable and realistic. Absolutely. You sure do. I would imagine that this guy didn't have a job. He probably doesn't have screaming children in his ear all day long. Um, he probably had a lot of time he could devote to it. So just imagine then, I don't know, promoting to a senior consultant in 26 days. Okay. How doable would that be? That's reasonable. <laughs> Becky is always my voice of truth, if you haven't already figured that out. So what I would challenge you guys to think about is give yourself 30 days. In 30 days, how can you change your business? Or how would you like to change your business? Okay? From where you are now, to 30 days from now, what do you want to see? What is important to you? What would that look like? If you could wave a magic wand, where would you want to be in 30 days from now? Who wants to share? A director. Brittany wants to be a director. Can I tell you guys that Brittany has really been working her butt off to try to do that too? She whoop, really, whoop. Trust me, I've been taking about um, 25 messages a day, <laughs> which I don't care because that's what I'm here for. But if I know what your goal is, then I know how to help you achieve it because I've done it. So what is your... 30 day goal. What is 30 days from now? What do you look like? I mean, I'd like to be 30 pounds skinnier. That'd be great. <laughs> I'd say senior. senior senior consultant. Okay. And how do we do that stuff? Have somebody sign up underneath you. That's you right. just need one. And how do you get someone to sign up under you? Offer everyone the business. That's exactly right. We stop letting that little devil that sits right here on the shoulder, okay? We got the angel on this side. And we got the devil on this side. And they're constantly fighting this war back and forth. Oh, she'd be good enough. She's not good enough. She's good enough. She's not good enough. So just pluck that little devil off your shoulder and go with the angel side, okay? All it requires is that you ask everyone. Mm -hmm. A no is a no, right? Right. Just like they say no to a show, they can say no to the business. And mm -hmm. that's okay. Because it may not be a no never. It may be a no not right now. Right. And it only takes one, pe one person. Who else has a 30-day goal? I think senior consultant with two to three active consultants under me. 
That's awesome. Because if it doesn't do any good to sign them up if they're not willing to put the work into their, their own business. And right. you can lead the horse to water, but they don't always drink. I know. You got to be thirsty. You have to be thirsty for it. And that's why, you know, I asked this question about having a 30-day goal because if you know where you want to be 30 days from now, then how are you going to achieve it? Right? Um, I think that you know, one of the things that I, I learned a long time ago in my former jobhood was about setting smart goals, you know, setting a time bound goal for myself and what that looked like, what I needed to do, what steps did I need to do to achieve that goal in that amount of time. Because no matter what, yeah, I can say I want to promote to an advanced director, but is that promoting to an advanced director by the year 2046? Or is that promoting to an advanced director by July of 2016? If you have a date and a time connected to your goal, how much harder are you going to push yourself because it's time bound? You know, just think about it when you were in college, if you guys, any of you guys went to college or are in college, you know, right, Bridget, that, you know, you've got X amount of semesters, you know, to maintain this GPA to end up getting your degree. So it's kind of the same sense with Pampered Chef, if you're looking to you know, better yourself as far as your business goes and grow yourself a, a team that you put a date and a time and a how am I going to do it together for yourself, okay? And what I want you to do with that is, so create your 30-day goal, but share it with me, okay? Your 30-day goal doesn't have to be anything about promoting, okay? If you don't want to promote, I'm not going to force the issue, um, I may, I may think you may make the best leader in America, but my idea of what your goal should be doesn't reflect what you know your goal should be. But I want to know what your goals are because that's what I want to help you achieve. Okay. My job is to help you reach those goals. So is it having a consistent show schedule? Is it, um, you know, doing your one show a month the best that you can. Is it learning how to cook and, you know, bettering your own family through the recipes that we have? Is it filling your kitchen with Pamper Chef products? Whatever your goal is, that's what I want to help you to do. All right, I have another question for you guys, and it involves math. <clears throat> is there a way to multiply your contacts? What do you guys think? Is there a way to multiply your contacts? Um, ask for references. References are huge. Huge. Huge, huge, huge. What are some other ways you can multiply your contacts? Everybody's quiet. Nobody's in a sharing mood tonight. Vendor events? Vendor events. Very good idea. Very, very, very good. <laughs> and vendor events are awesome right now, this time of the year, going into spring and summer. They're going to be everywhere. You're going to find vendor events everywhere. Craft shows and vendor events everywhere. Business cards? Business cards. Yep. Handing out your business information. What else? You guys are missing the most important way of multiplying your contacts. Word of mouth. Wearing your shirts. Pampered Chef well, shirts. Logo wears good, but it's not, still not what I'm looking for. Social media. What was that, in? Social media? No, nope, not social media. Word of mouth? No, nope, not word of mouth. How about your own personal enthusiasm? Where that does go a long way, your cooking shows. Think about it. It's your audience. It's an engaged audience. Okay? 
with the focus solely on you, those are all brand new contacts for you. So where some of you may get out of the house, you know, once or twice, that's normally me. I may go to the post office once or twice a week, you know, or the bank run or, you know, run errands or whatever. I don't make as many contacts out and about as I probably should. But the contacts that grow my business are the ones that my show. Okay? And the way that you are going to make sure those are lifelong contacts is how. By taking care of your customers. Okay? And offering customer care. Customer care um, is, is really important in our business because you know why? Not a lot of companies that do direct sales do customers. I'm sorry, guys. Think about it. How many of you guys have been to a Cincy show, a pure romance party, a jewelry party? How many of you guys got called by the, the customer or by the consultant and, and got thanked for the purchase? Or they followed up to see how you liked your product? That's what separates us from the rest of the companies is when you call, you know, you know that they have their orders seven to 10 days after, you know, it's been delivered. You call them and, hey, this is Becky with the Pampered Chef. I was just calling to see if your products are behaving themselves, you know, or however you want to say it. And yes, I'm a bit goofy. Bridget, you can laugh at me, but I am. But following up with those customers are going to be lifelong customers. And they're also going to be the people that remember that you took that extra five minutes out of your day to call and thank them for their business. And when they need more products or they want to do a party, then that's who they're going to come to. Okay. So what do you say when you call? You, do you call all your customers that order stuff? I do. Absolutely. The, the two things that people miss out on this, in this business are this. Okay, and write these down because these are like golden nuggets that everyone should know. Okay, you guys ready for this? Business changing ideas. Really not business changing, really not my own ideas, but you know. <laughs> so customer care and following up. So I always make sure with my hosts that all of the orders have been delivered first. Okay, because nobody wants to call, you know, Susie Q. And she still hasn't gotten her products a year later, right, Becky? You guys are going to crack up at this. But I, I did a show recently, and Becky actually went to the show with me. And it had been two years since I did the party for this for the same host. It had been ten, two years since she had done a show. And one of the girls that came to the party was just getting her order two years later from the first show. <laughs> and I'm not lying because Becky can vouch for it. So do you think I did good customer care back then? Not at all. True story. True story. True story. It is true. So I always follow up with the host and make sure that they have, you know, given all the orders out. Everybody got their orders. So then once I know that they have their orders, and then I just call. I call about a week later, and I just call and say, you know what? I just wanted to call and say thank you so much for coming to Susie Q's party. Um, you know, it was so fun getting to meet you, and you know, I can't wait for you know, I can't wait to uh, you know do a party for you maybe in the future. But I was just calling to make sure that your Pamper Chef products are all behaving themselves and that they're out of the box. That's what I do, and the reason why that's important, guys, is because. You want them to get them out of the box. We have a 30-day return policy, okay, where Pampered Chef will actually pay for the return if something's damaged, okay, or something doesn't meet your, their idea of what the product should have been. So you always call before that 30-day period's up, so that way we can provide excellent customer service by getting that product sent back for them. That's why you do it. You call to make sure that it's out of the box because – if they haven't taken it out of the box, who knows? Their stone may be cracked, right? We don't know because it gets shipped in a box. Who knows unless you open the box? 
But then I also offer recipes because that is, again, it's another service. So I let them know. I always, I'll follow back up with them in about 60 days to see if they need any um, new recipes for their products. <clears throat> so that's my one definite call that I make, okay? The other that people always, always, always forget about are the outside orders. You know, you know what I'm talking about. All of the outside orders, your host already has all these orders when you get to our show. And we never call and offer a show to those people. How many of you guys have called your outside orders? Yes. Yes. They're, they're some of the biggest leads. Again, they didn't have the privilege of coming to the party. They weren't able to make it. So they don't know you from Adam, but they're going to know you provide great customer service when you call and thank them for their order, even though that they did not get a meet to. Okay. And then you can kind of lead from that, thanking them into, well, I know you weren't able to make it to Suzy Q's party. Um, so you missed out on hearing all of the awesome theme shows I have coming up for summer. Would you be more in, or would you be interested in learning more about some of the shows I have coming up? And then that leads right into them hosting their own show. So that's two huge ways, guys, that number one, it's all about connections, creating the relationship. Number two, you're following up and thanking them. They're going to remember that. But number three, it's the people that always get forgotten about. They always get forgotten about. All right. So I think we're going to leave it there for tonight. Um, so what I'm challenging you guys to do is think about what your 30-day goal is. Be realistic, okay? I don't want you to set some unrealistic goal. And then what happens when you set a goal for yourself and it's like huge and then you, then you don't achieve it? You know, it creates frustration. Um, you get upset with yourself because you didn't reach it. So we want your goal to be attainable. And whatever attainable looks like for you is what we want it to be. So create your 30-day goal. And then I want you to message that to me, whatever your 30-day goal is. Okay? So how do you want your business to look 30 days from now? Okay. And for, let's see, Joanne, Angela, Becky, Brittany, the four of you guys, um, on Facebook, in the groups, I changed the one director-bound group over to um, a Reuters group. And the reason why I did that is because you guys all have a downline started, so you guys all have active team members. And what I'm looking to do, because I, I really want to focus with you guys more on making sure that we're leading our new teams in, in the right direction with the Strong Start program. So I want to know if you guys are free Thursday night by chance at 7 o'clock. And if not, then we can schedule another time. But I just want to go over the Strong Start program with you guys so that you guys can help your recruits get off to the best starts possible as you um, have new team members and are recruiting new team members. So I did, I put the message on there. If you guys look for that, you can just answer me back on there. If you guys are available Thursday night at seven, if not, I can always split it into another time or we can do two different meetings or whatever. <clears throat> um, some upcoming things that I'm going to be doing. I posted, um, my show schedule is now posted for April and May on the Wolfpack team page. Um, so if anybody wants to tag along to a show, uh, please make sure to let me know. That way I can ask my host permission for that. Um, I always like to do that to make sure that they're, they're fine with it. Um, but it's definitely a good training. If you haven't been to a cooking show before, if, you know, you just really kind of want to see um, how you can make some, you know, other changes to your cooking show or what they're going to look like. And then it'll also give me the opportunity, if I have someone there, that I can also record for my girls that are not local. Um, it helps that, you know, I can't obviously record myself as I'm cooking. So, um, yeah. then, 
What's that, Angela? I said, yes, please. <laughs> so it just helps me out, helps our team out in multiple ways. So, all right. Does anybody have any question? I know your brains are probably ready to like explode, but does anybody have any questions? I have one. Okay. Um, when you, so when you make that call to your customers and you ask them if their products are behaving themselves, uh -huh. um, I guess, how do you, what do you say after that? Like, how, Cause they'll probably be like, what do you mean? And then you'll be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you normally do, I laugh about it. And I, so it would normally be like this. Okay. Let's role play real quick. Okay. You ready? So yep. I'm calling you. Ring, ring. Hello. <laughs> that was good by the way. <laughs> Hi Angela. This is Becky with the Pamper Chef. How are you today? Fabulous. Fabulous. Well, that's awesome. Hey, do you have a minute for us to talk? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I first of all wanted to thank you for coming to Becky's party. It was a great getting to meet you and to get to see your beautiful little girl, Esther. How is she doing? Oh, she's fabulous, too. Fabulous. You just have a fabulous world. <laughs> Well, the reason why I called um, was I just wanted to call and make sure that your products were behaving themselves um, and that you've gotten them out of the box and are not having any issues with them. Oh, well, you know, actually, right now, I'm just uh, taking some notes. <laughs> I think my products are doing pretty good. Okay. So have you made anything in your deep cover baker yet? No, what would you suggest? Well, how can I do this? Um, we'll get off the phone. I'll follow up and I'll send you an email. Um, it's going to have an e-cookbook, um, so free recipes, and we all know we love free, um, of different things that you can make in the Deep Cover Baker. How about that? Sounds fabulous. Thanks. Okay. Right. Well, <laughs> if you have any questions when I send you that email, just let me know. But I'll follow back up in a couple months with you to see, um, you know, to make sure that that Deep Cover Baker still – Still behaving itself. Okay, you know, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Well, thank you so much, again, Angela, for blessing my business, and I can't wait to look forward, or I can't wait to work with you again. All so right. That, you know, you just really, again, you whatever you remember personally about them, um, you know, you try to kind of start off there with the personal part of it first before you kind of just dive right into Pampered Chef. So it's really about reconnecting with them, thanking them, and then offering the service. Cool. Okay. okay. Hey, Becky. Up, yeah. While you're talking about um, e-cookbooks, yesterday I was looking for one for the new veggie spiralizer. Do we have an e-cookbook for that? That one is actually on pamperedchef.com. Um, it's on there if you just pull up. Um, veggie spiralizer up in the search bar yep. it's a PDF of recipes okay or, or you can actually if you have a QR code reader yeah in the catalog you can scan that QR code and it'll pull it up there okay thank you uh-huh sure any other okay. questions for someone that's never done that before do you think that we should just start like go through all our old customers and just call them up uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. It's never too late to pick up the phone and call a customer. It's never too late. It's never too late. You know, we're real. We're real people with real lives. Um, so I think that they expect that, you know, we're not going to all be punctual and I'm going to call you in seven days and then remember to do it because life happens. Mm -hmm. So it's all about finding your system and what works with you guys, which next week, okay, Next week, I'm going to be teaching you guys a new system to keep everything organized. Okay. And <laughs> what oh, was crap. That? Not me. Um, to keep everything organized, both your personal and your business. Okay. Because for me, that's where I seem to kind of flounder a little bit here and there is because you have your personal things, you've got your business things. And then now I've got this team that's like growing and growing and growing. And how do I keep it all organized? Okay. 
So that's what I'm going to be teaching you guys is how to keep everything organized so that you're not missing out um, on any of those steps, whether it's customer care or host coaching or whatever. It's all going to be in one central location that anybody can do. Okay. Okay. So next week, and we may run over a little bit next week. So it might be more like an hour and 15 minutes, but it'll totally be worth it. Okay. Becky, I do have one question sure. about the recipes. Okay. It used to be that you could say, deep cover, you would look on the left-hand side and it would have recipes like deep cover baker or um, rock crock or everyday rock crock. You know, it used to list those, but I can't find the big items listed with their recipes. I find the small items. Are in and it, when I'm looking in pamperchef.com in my, you know, in the recipes, like when I go to pamperchef.com, you know, and I go under my shows and then it scrolling down, you can find a recipe, you know, recipes, find a recipe and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. I know that they've been making changes. If you're just looking for, um, like the recipe cookbooks that I'm talking about, they're all on Dropbox. See, and I can't get into Dropbox. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there a certain one that you need? I can send it to you in a message. Um, yeah. The, um, I'm going to be using in a show in May. It, it's not until May, but I'm going to be using um, actually Lily's. Um, all purpose pot? The pot with the steam. The, okay. Yeah, all-purpose pot with a steamer, yeah. That one actually, the e-cookbook is online. Um, it's okay. online. So up in the search bar, just type in all-purpose pot, and uh -huh. it will pull up the PDF. Okay. Okay? But that right. one is online. Okay. Okay? All right. All right, Bridget, did you have any questions? Thank you for joining us. I'm so happy you were able to take a couple minutes out of your schedule. Girl, oh. she is a busy college student. Um, Joanne, you will love her because she's working on becoming a nurse, too. Um, so I really appreciate you uh, spending time. Hopefully it was worth it. Did, did you find some value in it? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm going to try to join next week as well. Yay! <laughs> and Jamie's going to nursing school, too. Starting busy girl. Busy yeah. girl. Nurses. Well, what? There's another girl who's a nurse, um, a case manager. What's her name? Jen. Yeah. I have a lot of nurses. Yeah. There are four of us in this group. If we're all local to me, I would never have to worry about being sick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, girls. Well, I'm going to let you go, but I want to tell you this. I'm going to be recording um, a video probably tomorrow of a new booking tool so to speak, um, and how to use it. Um, so tomorrow, watch for a video, and then I'm also going to be posting um, the actual document to, to make it. Um, and you'll understand more when I post the video tomorrow. So just be on the lookout on our page for that. Um, or on the Facebook page? Yeah, it's on our private group, but I can send that to you, Steph. Okay. Okay. And thing, um, we never got that information on that new type of party from the Shippensburg training last week. You were going to post that? New type of party. They introduced a new type of workshop. You did that while while you were down there. And remember, we couldn't hear part of that. Was that was that our last meeting? Yep. With the which we oh, used the salad in a jar. Oh, oh, you're talking about what Michelle did. You're talking yes. about what, yeah. 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 Because we couldn't hear it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So the recording didn't take. But you can go our national executive, her website, okay? So it's carolradu.com, C-A-R-O-L-R-A-D-U.com, okay? And it'll ask you for a password, and the password is grow your business, all in lowercase letters. And so this, um, this is for everybody. Her page is for all of all of her downline, um, and so there's great new consultant resources and all kinds of things on her website for us. And it's called a hybrid show. Okay? Hybrid. hybrid show. 
Yes. And she actually has a video recorded of it on there. Um, so if you just look on Carol's videos on there, um, she talks about the hybrid show. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So that was carolradu.com and then grow your business for the password. Got it. And what was, what was it under? Um, it's under her videos. There's like a section that has videos. Okay. I see you up there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, girls. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, hopefully you learned a little something. Jamie, welcome to our team. I'm excited to have you on and we can't wait to um, yell and hoot and holler for you when you have your first show. Thank okay. you. Thank All right, you, girls. Becky. Talk with you soon. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye. 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 bye.